Module 6 will discuss the process for designing shoulder pavement with rigid pavement. Shoulders provide edge support of the mainline pavement. They assist with off-tracking vehicles. They improve safety. They also provide additional width for lane shift during rehabilitation. They provide refuge for disabled vehicles and they prevent erosion from pavement runoff. Shoulders have been constructed of asphalt and concrete. Sometimes the combination of the similarity between the outside lane and the shoulder and the encroachment of heavy wheel loads have resulted in joint problems between the travel lane and the shoulder. Research has shown that strengthening the shoulder, designing a wider outside lane, 13 feet, and striping the lane at 12 feet, the use of sealants and use of tied concrete shoulders have proven beneficial. Both asphalt and concrete shoulders can be used with rigid pavement travel lanes. Additional guidance on shoulder type selection can be found on Table 6.1 of the Rigid Pavement Design Manual, as shown here on this slide. Truck encroachment onto the shoulder is a major cause of shoulder distress. Therefore, truck percentage for the main line needs to be considered when selecting what type of shoulder should be used as previously discussed in Module 2. Let's start by discussing asphalt shoulder design. Let's first look at asphalt shoulders. For limited access shoulders and for low volume roadways, where you design easels is less than 10 million, so that would be a traffic level B or C, you could design your shoulders using the minimum values shown in the flexible payment design manual, table 5.5. A typical design would be one and a half inches of structural course with an OBG1 for limited access shoulder and one inch structural with OBG1 for a non-limited access shoulder. Remember that FC 12.5, which is one and a half, half inches, and FC 9.5, which is one inch, can be considered a structural course. These values assume that a stabilized subgrade is used in conjunction with optional base group one. Oftentimes, the pavement evaluation process will indicate that the shoulder was stabilized during the original construction of the road, and additional stabilization is therefore not needed. However, if there is no existing stabilization under the shoulder, and stabilization is not proposed, you will need to determine the type of materials that are in the embankment and evaluate the need for increasing the shoulder base and structural course. On higher volume roadways, a shoulder thickness decide should be performed using a 3% of design easel. To calculate the required structural number, the 3% is an estimate of the number of trucks that will be riding or parking on the shoulder over the design life of the pavement. This was covered in more detail under Flexible Pavement Design Training Module 7 and can also be found under the Flexible Pavement Design Manual Chapter 8. Also, if the shoulders are going to be used to carry substantial amounts of traffic as part of your temporary traffic control plan, you will need to design the shoulders in the same manner as a roadway. Under severe conditions, full depth shoulders matching the thickness of the travel lane pavement may be warranted. This is a typical section for asphalt shoulder over asphalt base adjacent to concrete pavement. This also shows the drain-crete edge drain subdrainage as mentioned in module four. What is important to highlight is that between the concrete and asphalt, there will be a tack coat and a shoulder joint seal using standard plans index 350-001 for concrete and asphalt shoulder joint use self-leveling silicone or hot pour sealant material. The following are some of the different types of concrete shoulder that are available. Taper thickness. This is recommended for use on limited access facilities. The thickness of the shoulder tapers out depending on the width and slope of the shoulder, as you can see on the two top typical details on the slide. The minimum thickness should be no less than six inches. 
full depth tied. Full thickness concrete shoulders tied may be used on limited access urban facilities, where use for future temporary traffic control or widening is likely. Uh, the bottom left detail. Uh, partial depth tied. Partial thickness tied may be used in limited access rural, non-limited access arterials and collectors. The design thickness can be based on the 3% easel from the mainline. The minimum thickness is also no less than 6 inches. That's the bottom right detail. There is substantial evidence that tied concrete shoulders improve pavement performance significantly. Concrete shoulders should be tied to the mainline pavement using tie bars. If the shoulders are to carry a substantial amount of traffic as part of the maintenance of traffic phasing, the pavement design engineer may design the shoulder in the same manner as the roadway based on an easel estimate of shoulder traffic during MOT periods. It is important to mention that the outside truck lane was designed at 13 feet wide and striped at the 12 feet to help reduce edge stresses and joint distresses. Some of these definitions were already covered under Module 1. This is a typical section for concrete shoulders over asphalt base adjacent to concrete pavement. This also shows the drain-crete edge drain subdrainage as mentioned in Module 4. What is important to highlight is that between the concrete to concrete joint, there will be a silicone sealant material to seal that longitudinal joint and the slab will be tied to the mainline. Standard Plans Index 350-001 also shows for concrete mainline with asphalt shoulder joint and you can use a self-leveling silicon or hot pour sealant material in those cases. Some important considerations for designing construction of concrete shoulder with asphalt base. The transfer joints should match the mainline joints and the transfer joints for the shoulder should be dowel for future MOT use. Here's two examples of typical sections using concrete shoulders and asphalt shoulders. The top typical shows a concrete main line with taper concrete shoulders. As you can see, the outside lane slab width is 13 feet, and it is striped at 12 feet to avoid those edge stresses. The bottom shows a concrete main line with an asphalt shoulder and also has an outside main line slab at 13 feet and striped at 12 feet. This concludes Module 6 for shoulder design. You're now ready to proceed to Module 7 for pavement widening.